Welcome back to another episode of the Todd Durkin Impact Show. And I hope you are super fired up today. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna challenge all your heads and your hearts today. Yup, as you're out there working out and you're doing your thing, I wanna say first off, thank you for being here. Thank you for giving me your attention for you tuning in. And whether you're solo or you got your spouse or your kids listening in, uh, man oh man, are you in for a treat today? My friends, today I got a guy named Joe Pangelinan, and Joe Pangelinan is one of my best friends. I've known him since 1998. By my calculation, that's about 23 years. 23 years I've known Joe Pangelinan, and it goes back to a card table on a home I used to rent it way before I opened Fitness Quest 10, when he and his wife were actually helping Melly and I actually name Fitness Quest 10. Yeah, it goes back that long ago. And I've known his family so, so well for so long. But guys, like many of us, on December 31st, 2020, so not even a year ago, December 31st, 2020, Joe got a diagnosis that nobody wants. Joe got diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. Now, let me tell you what, the last 11 months have been hell and back. And I have admired the the battle that he's in. But it doesn't surprise me because Joe is actually a former Division I wrestler. Yeah, he's a former Division I wrestler who, who had an amazing wrestling career. And he's in, embraced this cancer diagnosis. If, I, if there's such a thing as embracing a diagnosis, he's going to share his top lessons that in the last 11 months, how in some ways that this cancer diagnosis in a weird way has been a blessing for him to recreate a new normal, a new, a new relevance in his own perspective in life by using that wrestler's mentality. And I want you to listen in when Joe talks about the power of touch, the power of touch and what we call uh, uh, pressing the flesh. Folks, I'm telling you right now, you better get your heart rate monitors on because you are going to be at a you're going to be at a record setting pace as you listen. You may even shed a few tears. You're going to laugh. You may actually cry a little bit, tears of joy. But let me tell you what: you will be a better human being, a better man or woman by listening to today's show. So I say thank you. Listen all the way to the very end because it is one heck of a show. Without further ado, let's go out to my great friend right now, Joe Pangelinan, in the TD. HQ. Welcome back to the Impact Show. This is Todd Durkin here, and I got my friend, my great friend, Joe Pangelinan in the house. Joe, welcome to the show, brother. Good morning. Good morning, TD. Thanks for having me. Man, it is awesome to have you. Guys, I have known Joe since 1998. Now, is that possible, Joe? At least, yeah. Man, we were like 12 years old back then. <laughs> Something like that. So I was in grad school, and um, we're going to share the story. And uh, in the last, hey, 13 years or so, it's been one heck of a ride. And uh, Joe right now is in the fight of his life uh, battling cancer. And uh, he, when I asked him to be on the show, because we talk about impact, we talk about legacy, uh, Joe is a former college wrestler. Matter of fact, we still scrap a little bit every now and then with some single leg takedowns and things like that. Every now and again. Um, and we, I want to... Joe to share some of the some of the lessons and things he's going through right now to give us some perspective about life and and uh, since this diagnosis which has been um, pretty surreal it's not even been a year um, on that stuff but before we go there Joe let's go back to 1998 <laughs> I'm in a rental house and Melanie is great friends with your wife Cindy and uh, you guys come over to the house and uh, let's let's go back what, what, what was your impression yeah, back was- then. Yeah, that was that was George's house in a really in a really cool neighborhood of San Diego, and uh, you guys took over the lease after we bought our house, and you guys rolled into that place. It was great, great environment, and uh, that was when you before you even started the business, you were doing your 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 boot camps. Yes, and you and Mel were were finishing up your master's degree with my wife Cindy. Yep, beautiful wife. And um, we were trying to think, what's the name of this place? We sat for, I don't know, half an hour, 45 minutes, for rolling around all the different names of, of the gym. Do you remember right. any of them? <laughs> well, they're all derivatives of fitness. Fitness well, 10. I remember we had like a card Quest table 10. and there was a yellow legal notepad and we probably had 100 names. And the big, the big dilemma back then, if you ever named a business, is like, should I use my name or not? Correct. Should we use like, you know, Durkin's Fitness or Todd Durkin's Gym or whatever? Because guys, back in the late 90s, y'all must remember, 
Studios didn't exist. So when I told Joe I was opening up a one-on-one training studio and massage therapy, he kind of looked at me cross-eyed like, uh, TD, it's all about the big box gyms, like a studio that people come and train. I'm like, Joe, you got to trust me. He's like, I got you. Let's go. <laughs> and we came up with Fitness Quest 10. We wanted to stay away from just using my name because the vision even then in the late 90s was to grow to multiple trainers, massage therapists, Pilates instructors, because Melanie was teaching Pilates until um, I fired her. I mean, until she uh, gave up her job because she was teaching at Southwestern College um, on that. So Joe was part of the naming of Fitness Quest 10. Yeah. Fitness Quest 10. That goes back a, a long way. And as a wrestler, Vision Quest. Vision Quest is a big thing. I want to say it was sometime about that time period where Vision Quest was a big wrestling movie. And as a Division One wrestler, uh, that was in my mind. So... It so right into the name. So when he, when he says he was a Division One wrestler, he just kind of scooted by that. He was a standout uh, Division One wrestler at Cal Poly, and you also wrestled with some uh, quite famous people uh, in the in the uh, MMA world as well. Correct? Who are some of those guys that you wrestled um, with? Was it was it Lydell? Was he one of the guys? Yeah, Chuck Liddell. Chuck Absolutely. Liddell, Ice Man. Ice Man was a he was about two years behind us. Yeah, and surprisingly, he wasn't one of the starters. Tougher. Really, he was not a starter on the team. Eric Swartz. And him would go to battle all the time. But okay. he was a natural fighter. Okay. Just a natural fighter. He loved to go out and cause a ruckus in Cal Poly's downtown area. He was just <laughs> always looking for a scrap. Looking for someone to looking for someone to give him the, the evil eye so he could go to town on him. I tell you, he was if it wasn't for MMA, who knows what this guy would have been. It was a perfect timing for the guy. <laughs> it was good. Perfect timing. You, you gotta share before we go into uh, the deeper story about Chuck Liddell and you say he liked to scrap. And I, I still laugh at this story every time. When when you guys were out late one night and uh, it was you and a couple of your buddies in Lydell and a couple of other guys approach you and we're going to fight until Chuck got his hands on him. Remember that <laughs> yeah, story? I do. Or do you I want do. me to tell? Yeah, I'll tell you. Yeah, fantastic story. I wasn't actually there, but the uh, but one of the guys who's actually a, a wrestling coach at one of the local junior colleges currently, yep. one of my good, good friends, Joey Dansby, okay. was in the group of five. <laughs> And, and, and back then, you know, colleges, these, these wrestlers, we want to go out and have a good time. So we found a rugby party. Okay. And we decided they were going to go to the rugby party and have a good time. So they were out there drinking their beer, having a good time. And the rugby players looked and said, who are these guys? They were wrestlers. And, you know, usually wrestlers are pretty small and rugby players are pretty big. So yep. they started giving them the evil eye. And someone said something. Someone started talking some smack. And the wrestlers hightailed it out of there. Well, mm. the rugby players thought it might be a good time to, you know, flex their <laughs> flex their muscle. So they chased after them. So you got five wrestlers. And... I think jo Joey was an 818-pounder. He had a couple 126-pounders, maybe a 57-pounder, and Chuck Liddell. And so they're running down the street. And Chuck was how, how much? He was One. probably 175, 180 okay. pounds. Okay. He was lean back then. And the rugby players were 6'4", 230? Rugby players. Yeah. Just monsters. Yep. Just monsters. Okay. And they come chasing him, literally like a pack of dogs. Okay. Chasing them down. And Chuck and all the wrestlers, they, they were not going to be out be running these rugby players. Right. So they were running down the street. Finally, they just gave up the run and stopped. Okay. Middle of the street. <laughs> Chuck held back all the wrestlers with his hands. Held them back. <laughs> And the rugby players surrounded the wrestlers and said, here we go. And one by one, each rugby player approached Chuck. And this is bad not a idea. bad idea. It was one punch for four, three guys. It was one, two, three. And it went one, two, <laughs> two three. three down. They went down. And the other five or six rugby players looked at them like, we're out of here. We're out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and they just and the wrestlers walked away laughing, and and Joey, my buddy Joey, that's a true story, was just shaking his head like something big. The coming. legend of Chuck Liddell. There, there was. That's where it all started. So it was unbelievable, Chuck. I've heard that story a thousand times. Joe and John Galkowski have shared that story a thousand true times story. on that true story. That that was the legendary story before he was an actual legend. Legend before the legend. Legend before the legend. Right there. So Joe, I've known your family. Uh, for a long time now, uh, two great kids, um, and I've watched them grow up. And Brenna's now over at Brown University, and Caden's up at Cal Poly. And uh, it's amazing to see your family grow. I want to fast forward. Um, you've had a great career uh, in the mortgage uh, industry, and you've helped me quite a bit over the years with uh, our homes that we've bought. But Fast forward to, um, you know, last year around the Thanksgiving time and, and uh, share with our listeners what you went through. So I'm, the, I'm 54, I'm, the, I'm 54 years old at the time, Okay, last year, last uh, Thanksgiving. And, you know, I'm an athlete, 
by nature. Yep. I've stayed active my whole life. I'm running, hiking, lifting. I've come to the to the to Fitness Quest Ten, and um, last year, right around Thanksgiving, my I had a cough. It wouldn't go away. Okay. I didn't think much of it, like most guys. I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna sweat my way through it. So this is this is November of 2020. 2020. Were you thinking COVID? I wasn't thinking COVID. Okay. I think I might have had a couple tests at the time, but okay. I really wasn't experiencing any other symptoms. But it was just a persistent I cough. I remember that. Yep. Just a persistent cough. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I burned the candle like a lot of guys trying to, you know, make it to the next level. Why are you looking at me with an evil eye? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I, I put off things, put off things that I should be doing. My wife looked at me and said, hey, you know what? Your clients, it's the day after Thanksgiving. Mm. Your clients are not going to be knocking on your door. They're not going to be calling you. Your office is closed. Go down to urgent care. And get a chest x-ray. I think you've got walking pneumonia. Yeah. Walking pneumonia. What is that walking pneumonia? Yep. What is that? And she said, you get nothing to, nothing to lose. And I said, well, okay, I'll give it a shot. So I go down to urgent care. Everything's closed. And she takes my vitals. Everything's normal. She looks at me, what are you even doing here? Hmm. I said, well, my wife thinks I have walking pneumonia. All right, well, let's, let's get a chest x-ray. Got it. So she does a chest x-ray. Come, she comes back and says, you know, sure enough, yeah, one of your lungs is full of fluid. And... Your wife is right. I said, son of a gun, man. There's a that San Diego State degree paid off. <laughs> Here we go. So she gave me strong antibiotics for the for the for the pneumonia and said, come back in a week and we'll check it out and make sure that it's doing going in the right direction. And so a week later after taking the antibiotics, she takes another chest x-ray and she says, Nothing has changed hmm. at all. She says, you know what? I don't see anything in there. But you know what? You should probably go to your your internal medicine doctor and just you have a CT scan. They can they can test test the fluids, see what's going on in there. So I thought no big deal. So I was my mind wasn't thinking, you know, cancer diagnosis. Right. So I went to my uh, my internal medicine doctor. He did some tests. I could tell he was a little bit skeptical, but I didn't think much of it. So he started doing some blood work. The blood work came back normal, hmm. and I thought great, normal sounds good. Yeah. But when you're supposed to have Walking pneumonia, normal is not good. Your white blood cell count should be up, elevated, and it was normal. So he said, well, let's do the, let's do the CT scan. He did the CT scan probably a week and a half after, after Thanksgiving of November 2020 and had the CT scan at about 10 o'clock in the morning. I get a phone call at 11.15 from his office saying, mm. hey, come on down. The doctor wants to meet with you. And I, I'm thinking to myself, this guy is, got, is fantastic. Great customer this service. Great customer service. <laughs> this guy, I'm going to switch my doctor because this guy is on top of right, it. We're right. going to get some serious antibiotics going. <laughs> right. So I go down there at 11.15, and the first thing he does is shake my hand. And no, talk about it. This is November of 2020 when everyone's socially distancing. I haven't shaken a hand in about Interesting. Oh, nine months. And that was a red flag. Like, why is he shaking my hand? And then he, he sits, remembered that. Absolutely. Hmm. Because I hadn't pressed the flesh on anyone. I'm a touchy wrestler kind of guy. Hmm. And he tricked my hand. I thought, that's really weird. So he sits down. And I was with nobody. I was going in there for stronger antibiotics. And he sits down. And literally in the course of about five minutes, my life changed. He started He started giving me the cancer talk. I felt like I was, it was surreal. I felt like I was in a Tom Hanks movie. I swear, he's giving me the talk. You've got cancer. You need to do this. You need to do that. And I, all of a sudden, it was like an out-of-body experience. So what, what are you talking about? I'm, a week ago, I was hiking the top of this mountain around my house. I'm running five miles a week before that. And he tells me I've got a tumor in my lung. You've got nodules in your left lung. It looks like it's on your spine and in your bone, your, your, your uh, iliatic crest. And you need to see an oncologist right away. It was surreal. Mm. It was surreal. I'll never forget it. And so he gets up and another red flag. Last thing he does, this is the first time I met this doctor because this was not my normal doctor. Right. Uh, he gives me a big old bear hug. And I'm like, well, certainly I haven't hugged anyone in the last 10 months. So you know, he, he sent me on my way. I gave him the name of a great oncologist that I knew in the family. And I had to drive home and tell this to my family. Never forget it. I got in the car, put my mask back, I took my mask off. I drove home and Cindy and Brenna were sitting on the couch. And the first thing, they were just having a good time. And they said, hey, how'd the doctor appointment go? Thinking it was going to be normal. Mm. And I just looked at them and I said, not good. I've got a tumor in my lung. And from that point forward, it was game on in our family. It was, it was intense. It was intense. And that was late November 2020. It was... Oh, 10 days or eight days after Thanksgiving. Okay, so December now, okay. Yeah. 
Wow. It was incredible. And from that point forward, I've just never been the same. So when that doctor said that, he wasn't saying you had cancer. He was saying there's a tumor on your lung. We need to get the oncologist to check it out to see if it's malignant or benign? Yeah, he didn't actually. See, he said we need to see. Yeah. We need to see an oncologist. Okay, he's not a cancer doctor. Right, but it was pretty clear, and I could tell from that point forward he knew something was going on. Correct. When he saw that that chest X ray of, uh, he knew that it wasn't that it wasn't normal, and he wasn't going to give me that diagnosis, but he knew because he had seen because the CT yep. scan the, the CT scans are pretty they're they're, they're pretty conclusive. Yep. and it talks about metastases talks about it, a lot of big words that I hadn't heard of at that time. Yeah. I mean, I was when I was not in that mindset. Whether it was going to metastasize or not, is that what? He said it had metas- it, it had. It spread. Okay. Yeah. So when did you actually get diagnosed from the oncologist? So I, I met with an oncologist about five, four or five days later, okay. Matt. She, um, it was on, she ordered a, a biopsy, basically, mm-hmm. to go in and get a sample of this, of this, of this tumor yep. that they saw, got the biopsy, and the biopsy results came in on December thirtieth, and I met with her December thirty first, and that was the dex, the actual diagnosis. December thirty first. December thirty first. Happy, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy to New Joseph. Year. You have cancer. Happy New Year. You have cancer, and she oh. she said stage four cancer, and if anyone stage is, four lung cancer, stage four lung cancer to a to a someone who's never smoked, a never smoker. So go figure. There's a, and that's one thing I've learned. There, you know, this 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 foe that I'm against right now, it attacks all kinds. You don't have to be a smoker. You don't have to be someone as mm. in a in a, an environment that had carcinogens. Cancer is is real and it's it's out there and that's affecting people that have never smoked. Well, what's the percentage of lung cancer of non-smokers? Is it less than 10% of people with lung cancer are non-smokers? Because obviously you think lung cancer, you think, oh, he or she must have been a smoker. Obviously you've never smoked in your life. Is it is it a less than 10%? Do That's you know? That's a good question. I don't know the actual percentage, but it's 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 not uncommon. Yeah. There are thousands of people out there that so have- So take me back. I, I know this is probably tough, but I, December 31st, it's, it's New Year's Eve. You say, happy New Year's. You get that word like- Stage four lung cancer. By the way, not the best kind of cancer you can get. <laughs> not that any cancer is a good cancer. Correct. Um, where's your mindset at at that point? Like, what do you spinning? Do you want time by yourself? Do you want to just cry? Do you want to crawl up in a ball? And what 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 happens on December thirty first and January first? And where are you at? Oh, it's hard. It's 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 overwhelming. You all I can think about is like, what does that what does that actually mean? Stage four. Mm. Yeah, for the person who's never come across cancer, never had someone, a loved one, a friend who have died of cancer who have fought that battle, stage four is a death sentence for the most part. That's mm. what you think. Mm. It's not. I'll be clear to your to your audience, your people. It's not. That's just the beginning. That's just the instruction manual. It's time to mm. it's time to fight. It is. But most people that don't realize it, it's a scary thing. And there's stage one, stage two. Stage four means it's moving and it's spreading. Mm. That's what that's that's what that means. Okay. And I had no idea what that meant. And a year ago, I just sat in my house and I, just, I had no idea. I, I wasn't crying, I was in shock. Yeah. I was in shock. And I, yeah. I you know, I didn't know how to, how to even, how to, how to even move forward. You're almost catatonic, you stop, you know, thank God I've got a great wife and a great family. Cause right. and that's one important thing to, to try and focus on is making sure you've got a good team of people around you yep. because they're gonna be able to think for you when you're you not able to think. Mm. Absolutely. I've had a, quite a few experiences in the last 11 months where I wasn't able to think. Mm. Chemotherapy, COVID, the whole nine yards. But yeah, the, you need to have that around you. And I'm gonna, I want to talk about that in a moment as far as some of your, the last 11 months, maybe some of the deep thoughts or wisdom or even lessons you've learned and the perspective, I guess you'd say, in the last 11 months. But before we even go there, you're in shock. It's early 2021. You get this diagnosis. Um, at what point do you say it's time to fight? Because I'm, I'm, I'm putting myself in those shoes. I would think that a few weeks you're going down, you're down in the tums. At, at some point, knowing you, you're a wrestler, you're an athlete. It's like, you know what? I got to get up. And I just got pinned and I, I lost the match. I got to get up and I got to fight. I got to come back. Was there a point where you felt that 
it, it's the fight of my life. It's time to go. And, and now yeah. I've got to double down on everything. Yeah. Uh, what was that? When was that? It was day one. Day one. Day so, one. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta have the, you gotta have the will. You gotta mm. have the will. You gotta have the fight in you. And it's okay. natural for me. You know, they tell you that when you're, when you're sick, stay off of web MD. Cause <laughs> yeah. I tell you, you, you don't want to be self-diagnosing. Right. Any, right. any, you know, yourself at all, but, but, <laughs> but we all go there. We, we feel something with everyone listening in, you know, that we're not going to, you know, Google and you've got, you know, a call. You, don't go to Google don't <laughs> and do start that. doing that. Yeah. Especially in the middle of the night. No. And you're like, I'm, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. It's the worst thing. Right. You, Cause, cause the, usually the lead in is always on longevity. It's lifespan. It's how, <laughs> right. how long people last with stage four lung cancer. And it's not pretty. Mm. So that is overwhelming. What do they Great. say? What, when you, when you, like, if you look at WebMD, which I'm sure you've been, is it's it not good. Like it's, a year, two years? No less than a year. Really? Yeah, I'll tell you a story about that in just a minute. Cause I've had, I've had radiation oncologists talk to me about that. And it was the first time, mm. it, well, I, we'll go there now, I guess. So good oncologists these days never talk about that because everybody, everybody has a different fight in them. You know, every cancer is different, every situation is different. Um, I, I read a book about a cancer survivor he had talked about you know every cancer has a bell curve I mean, every every type of cancer has a it, it, people are on a bell curve there's 50 percent of the people that don't make it past this time period and then 50 percent make it past that period there's always a tail end of a bell curve yep right and your goal as an individual as a fighter is to be on the tail you want to be on that swinging tail the very very end of that tail curve, yep. right and so my thing was i got to get on that tail mm. somehow so no no Cancer doctor that I've come across talked about that. The, the radiation oncologist for the brain tumor, and that's a whole other deal because I it had metastasized into my brain. He had he talked to me and we're talking about the the radiation that he's gonna that he's gonna do on me procedure, and he said, when I was an intern up at UCSD, when I was an intern like this intern in the room now, when, quite a few years ago, came across a cancer patient like yours, stage four lung, it it absolutely would have been a year or less. Mm. That was the first time that someone had given me a time frame. Right. I was like, a year or less. And this was probably, um, this was probably March or April that he told me that. Mm. So I'm talking, I had already burned through four months of that year. Wow. I'm like, a year or less. So is that eight months? Is that 10 months? What is that? I'm already, I've am already. i already burned through that. So when he threw that at me, it was like hitting me with a, it sure. was like, just it was like an uppercut it's like a tyson fury uppercut mm. wham mm. like holy cow. but then he said but cancer research has come a long way target therapies research is is up. he said i've got a patient coming in right after you that's at year four after that is year eight mm. there's a lot of target therapies that can that can make your you know that are treatable yep he said you're and i've told it was many times that they told me that your cancer is not curable when it's my kind of cancer uh, stage four lung, this type of cancer is not treatable, not, not curable, but it's treatable. Mm -hmm. And the goal is to, to treat the cancer like diabetes, kick it down the That's road. That's all you want. Yeah. That's all you want is kick yep. it down the road. Hopefully research will catch up. That's right. We're going to give you therapies. And by the time that therapy resists, boom, another therapy come along. Yeah. And and that's the goal is to treat this thing and hopefully I'll be dying of old age because I've a uh, you know I ran a I ran a, a 12k <laughs> right? in my 90s. So you know tell, what I'm saying? That's I love the goal. It. And, and you know I know being with you by your side um, in this last 11 months or so. Tell me about s some of your perspectives and how they've changed. Maybe I, I hate to call them lessons, but maybe some thoughts that you've had and maybe in some ways cancer in some ways has brought even greater blessings to your family and your life. But what are a couple of the lessons that you would share with our listeners today um, in your journey in the last, you know, close, close to a year now as we approach, um, you know, we're in fourth quarter of 2021 yeah. here. But what are a couple of the thoughts that you could share about the journey you've been on in the last year? I've learned a lot in 11 months, and I'm looking forward to learning a lot more, hopefully in the coming years. Um, you know, you got to you got to live with hope. You know, you've got to you've got to live and you've got to keep your pers keep things in a perspective. One thing that I've learned is you got to be present. Mm -hmm. You have to be present. You have to be mindful. Um, you're reading books all the time, all the time about how to be being mindful and being present and thank count your blessings. But, you know, life is life is dirty. Life is difficult mm -hmm. and it gets in the way. And even even when you're a, a top performer and you're trying to stay focused, life 
gets in the way. It, mm. it kicks you. It kicks you down. And so you're always constantly fighting with it. But I have learned you've, you've got to stay focused on the present. Because for mm -hmm. me, I don't know how long it's going to be. Is it going to be? Is it going to be that? Am I going to be that four-year guy? Am I going to be the eight-year guy? I read books on guys that are ten and twelve and twenty years out. Am I going to be that guy? I'm fighting like hell to be on the tail end, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. All I can go is all I can go off of is how I'm feeling now. So I really, I really try and focus on my health and how I feel. Certainly, people that are in my with my diagnosis, stage four lung. Um, there are a lot of them are on oxygen. I've, I've gone, mm. to, I've gone to a couple appointments. One of the first radiation oncologist appointments I went to, they read my chart. They came out, this is during COVID. They came out to take me back to, to start the brain radiation process. And she says, can you get up and, you know, can you, can you walk to the end of the building so we can get you in there? And, and I just got done with a six and a half mile walk the day before. And I looked at her like, yeah, I can walk. I can, absolutely. I walked six and a half miles yesterday. <laughs> and I'm going to walk she six next like, week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I said, absolutely. And she mm. looked at me like, wow, okay, that's great. And she said, most people in your situation with your, with your case are not in that mindset. They're not in that um, physical frame of mind. Yeah. So all I can do is stay focused on the present. I'm healthy. I was able to catch it. Even though it was stage four, I was able to catch it when I'm, you know, still able-bodied and still moving. I do yeah. my best to stay active and exercise. How much would you say the wrestler's mentality has helped you, I'll say, beat cancer, deal with cancer? Uh, obviously, your your strong will has gotten you through, the, through this 11 months later, and you're doing fantastic. But how does the wrestler's mentality fit into this, and where does it come into play? It shaped who I am. Mm. I can't speak for all wrestlers or all athletes, so to speak, but it shaped who I am. Everything that I, and I'm 55 years old. I, 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 everything that I do revolves around those lessons that I learned when I was a, you know, yeah. a teenager and a college wrestler. Everything, yeah. the fight, the tenacity, staying in touch with yourself, with your mind, the mental games that you play. Mm. You know, it's tough. 50 percent or 60 percent of a of a wrestling match is in your mind. Mm. Especially when you go to the national tournament, you got 32 of the best wrestlers in the nation yeah. battling it out. There's five, there's maybe five or six that are above hands, hands down above everyone else. But then the rest of us, you know, uh, knuckleheads are any given day. We could, we could place in the top, top eight. Mm. And so, you know, I, I take the last, uh, 11 months I've been using that mentality to, to fight. You got to yeah. get up because that, that self chatter that happens with you, it's always there. That's well, one thing that I've learned. It's, it's, so I, let me it's ask, always a reminder. Let me ask you, let's say someone is going through a battle right now and it, maybe it's not cancer. Maybe it's just someone's down and out. They've had their share of tough luck and they're battling right now. How could that person adopt this quote wrestlers mentality to help them deal with whatever adversity they might be going through physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, financially, relationally, what would you say? What would you, what advice would you give based on your life's work to help them get through this battle right now? How do you do that? You, you, you got to focus on the good things that are happening in your life, mm. period. Just like in a wrestling match, if you get down, if you get, if you get down four or five or six points, don't think about the two or three points that you just lost. Think about the two that you could get in the yeah. next minute and a half. How much time do I have to score some more points? So in, in life, life mm. in life, what's good about my life? What are the good things that I can focus on? And that's one thing that I've learned is yeah. all of us think too much about all the bad things. We're always looking at it from mm. a from a negative perspective. And uh, you know, to be present, to be mindful uh, is yeah. to is to to shed off the things that are not positive in your life. You talk about this, uh, energy vampires. We've got to, all of us. We need to get rid of those energy Amen. vampires. Amen. And we're talking people and, Preach and 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 mindset. Preach the it. things that the things that that weigh He's weigh you down. Now. They can. He's preaching now. That's all they love can it. do. I love it. When you say you got to focus on the good things, do you? Do you have a formal process to do that when you're out walking? You just reflect on it. You have a journaling process, uh, a gratitude process, or is it just when you're out exercising, moving, you're being grateful in the moment? It's a working process. Okay. It's always a working process, you know. Sure. Um, I'm trying to get better at it every day, but I, um, when I'm out, when I'm out there walking, I, I walk every Sunday a long walk with one of my good buddies, Dale. We go out and we walk five five and a half, six miles, if whatever I can. There was a point in time where I could only walk two. Yeah. And I was like, you know, let's not focus on the four that I didn't get. Let's focus on <laughs> the two right. that I got. You're moving. Yeah, I focused on two that I got. Yeah. 
And um, I, it's a conscious effort to be thankful about, you know, hey, you're out here. Yeah. You know, doctors have told you that some people in your situation, they can't even get out of bed. Yep. They can't even get up the stairs. And I'm walking two miles a day, a mile and a half. Thank, be thankful of the of the positive things in your life. That's what I've been So doing. when you're focusing on the good things in your life, what's what's good in Joe Pangelinan's life now? What are some good things oh, that are happening uh, yeah. for you? What's like, I'm really grateful for this. Well, you know, and this is, a, this is a really odd thing to say, but, you know, this cancer diagnosis has been a blessing. Hmm. There's been some amazing things that have happened in the last 11 months. Hmm. One thing is uh, the relationship that I had with my family. My family, I was always pretty tight with the family, but, you know, families can get, a, families can have dynamics and issues that go on. Sure. When, when you get a diagnosis like I've had, and our family has had all the little things that annoy you or bug you about your 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 ch your children or your wife. They just fall they fall away, and 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 you can focus on all the positive things. The relationships that I had with my my son and my daughter. Yeah, they are richer now than I've ever had, and I I couldn't have dreamed of a better relationship with my my kids and my wife than I have now. And to be honest with you, without this diagnosis, I know that it wouldn't be there. Yeah. Because life's messy, like I said. Yeah. It gets in the way. It beats on you. Life's, it's, it'll beat you down. And you'll, you'll lose sight of all the positive things. That's one thing I've, I've been able to focus on, all the good things. And my daughter, my son, my wife have done the same thing. They understand perspective. Mm. You know, our perspective. My daughter said, God, "You know what? I don't think we didn't need this diagnosis to get perspective." She thought, I, I, "We have pretty good perspective as yep. it is." Yep. But, you know, in hindsight, the perspective is a hell of a lot better yeah. now. When when someone gives you a, um, a an expiration date, that's the one thing. There are a lot of people out there that have an expiration date, but they don't know what it is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The writing got it got rubbed off somehow. Yeah. You know, there's some people out there that are living dangerous lives, yep. and they're you know they're probably one two years out. Who knows? Yep. You know, I thought my expiration date was going to be into the 80s. My dad's 85. His mother was 102. I figured I'm running. I'm 55. I'm 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 going into my 90s. Yeah. And, and the doctor on uh, November 2020 gave me an expiration date. Mm. And it wasn't necessarily a date, but it was a look in her eyes, like, okay, this is this is serious. So uh, I'm very mindful of that. Yeah. Every day I'm mindful of that. That you've got an expiration date. Make these next. This next day, yeah. this next month, this next week, make it count. Yeah, you know, I got I got to brag on your kids for a second because I know you're proud of them. And um, Caden, who's a student up at Cal Poly, folks, he is one of the kindest, most mature. Uh, when you talk about being present uh, in conversations, uh, one of the one of the 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 smartest, kindest, uh, most sincere young men that I know. And he is he's like a he's like an old man wrapped in a young guy's body. Sure. Like he's so mature. Sure. And you're daughter uh, Brenna um, not only did she delay uh, a year going to Brown uh, for multiple reasons um, you talk about a smart young wise woman she was the only student selected two years ago to serve California in our office up at in education. Sacramento in education folks you, you may not know the name Brenna Brenna Pangelinan yet but I don't know what she's going to do with her life but it's going to be something special <laughs> and you're going to be hearing about her I don't know if it's in politics uh in business or all of it but she is a special special woman and heck they've trained at Fitness Quest 10 since they've been kids yeah right yeah. I mean they're, they're so special yes uh they've been coming here since Brenna's been coming here since she was probably seven or eight yeah uh maybe nine she's she's 19 now mm. and i used to think why do you guys drive because we live about 30 minutes away and i love you but you know we're 30 minutes away and i thought well we've got you know my wife teaches mm. she teaches exercise yep. and fitness at the local junior college we live 30 minutes away we've got trails <laughs> uh, uh, abundant trails around. i'm like why are you driving 30 <laughs> minutes to go get a workout and i want to say about mm. five years ago they came back and it was like a mm. paradigm shift their mindset I just remember thinking to myself, you know, it has nothing to do with the physical fitness stuff that's going on at that here at Fitness Quest End. Their minds were changed. Mm. Both of them think differently now because of their relationship that they have with you in this center. Mm. Absolutely. And they're much more powerful. And to have, you know, to have 13, 14, 16 year olds learn this stuff. Mm. I mean, I learned this stuff when I was in the battle of not all of it, but some of it when I was competing at the division one level. I mean, they learned this stuff 
in their teens. Mm -hmm. And it's changed the way that they approach life, the way they approach relationships and school. Yeah. They're, they're, they're warriors. Yeah. As well, you say. They you. learned that here. Thank you for those words. Um, do you have a bucket list? I always talk about bucket lists. Like uh, it doesn't matter, yeah. you know, whether you've got a cancer diagnosis, you think you're going to yeah. live five more years, 10 more years, or you think you're going to live for a hundred more years because everyone doesn't like to look at yeah. that. But do you have a bucket list? And if so, what's on it? That's interesting. I've thought about that as well. A lot of people say, oh, you know, you're, who knows, you, you got this diagnosis. What do you want to do? Where do you want to go? And, you know, I want to spend as much time as I can with my family and the people that I care about, the relationships. Yeah. Um, I don't, you know, I could go, I could jump on a plane and go to Milan right now or go to Italy and it'd be really great, but I'd rather spend it with, you know, Brenna mm -hmm. or Caden. Mm -hmm. Or I just had, yeah. I had a couple buddies from college, they're wrestlers, and I've known these guys for probably 30 years. And we had the best time yep. outside of my backyard, just telling Chilling. lies, you know, <laughs> yeah. laughing, teasing each other, <laughs> barbecuing. <great> <laughs> I mean, I could have been, I could have been in, in Paris, but it wouldn't have been as much fun. Yep. So I think about it all the time. Well, where do I want to go? I just, I just want to spend time yeah. with the people who care about me yeah. and I care about them. Yeah. That's what's important. Um, but though it's, it's your bucket list is almost experiences, creating experiences, absolutely. right? Some people think bucket list, they think you have to go to Europe or this dream vacation, but let's think about your bucket list folks. And imagine you just had a cancer diagnosis. Your, your time becomes more finite, but you don't need a cancer diagnosis to have that time become more poignant and joe is a great example of he's living his best life in a lot of ways right now because every conversation every barbecue everything that you're doing you're it's it's you're in the moment and that's that's that poignancy of when you think about your bucket list um think about what is it you want to do and maybe it is a dream vacation i mean i i love traveling myself and i've got things on my bucket list think about your bucket list because your bucket list is what keeps you alive you going to see brenna over on the east coast keeps you alive Absolutely. right going to see caden up the coast keeps you alive you spending time with cindy keeps you alive and it's the same for for me and any of you listening in let's think about that bucket list and let's put things in the bucket list that aren't just monetary but things that really bring your soul and your spirit to life as well. Speaking of that, what inspires you today or who inspires you today? Well, who inspires me today? People out there that are fighting the same mm. fight that I'm fighting. Um, I'm relatively new in this battle. I mm. mean, I, it hasn't even been a year. Mm. Um, mm. I was telling this to Julie just, just recently that, you know, um, one one lesson I've learned is you need to reach out to other people that are on this cancer path, yeah. so to speak. I remember when it happened in November, it, I always felt like an angel lifted me up and put me on a whole different path. I'm still walking. Yeah. I'm still walking on a path, but there's a there's a big glass partition that separates us on the cancer side and the rest of the world. And I'm just walking. And I, and I remember thinking, you got to get up and start walking because there's a lot. Of, I didn't realize there's a lot of people out there walking this cancer walk. You know, one out of two men they say one out of two men will get cancer in their life. One out of every three women will get cancer. That's mm. the statistics. Wow. I had no idea. Wow. So there's a lot of people on that on that path. I'm only less than a year into that path. My friend Marilyn, she's a 10-year breast cancer survivor. And reaching out to her, seeing her perspective, she she's an inspiration to me. Yeah. I'm, I'm it's hopeful that I can make it to 10 years. Mm. And I'm, I want to try and reach out farther along I can get on that path is to reach out and maybe be that for someone else. Mm. That's one thing I've learned is, you know, it, it, life, it gets heavy. Yeah. The anxiety, the stress is heavy. Reaching out to someone who actually has the diagnosis can give you a little perspective, Yep. you know, keep you focused on the good things helps. Yeah. Cause again, you look around and all the people that you love, they're not on the path. They're on, they're on the other side of that glass partition. Yeah. You're trying to walk with them, but they're not walking on the same dirt yep. path that you're walking on. But there are another thousand people, million people that are walking on that. Man. Some are laying down, some are tired, some are frustrated, some are crying, yeah. and others are running. Yep. I mean, I've, I've, there's a couple guys that uh, in these forums that, you know, they're lung cancer survivors running half marathons. Mm. You know, 10 year survivors. They're out there doing CrossFit, they're doing wonderful things that their guys, those guys are going to be on the tail end. Mm. And that's where I'm shooting for being on yeah. the tail end of that bell curve, man. That's what I'm I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you being here and sharing this, Joe. Um, I mean, to me, this is, this is such a, an iconic conversation. And you know, I love you like a brother and, um, guys just, it was just a few days ago. I literally picked up the phone and called Joe and said, Hey, Joe, I want to get you on the show and I want you to come on the podcast. 
And he agreed. And four days later, here he sits as we record this. But I asked Joe at the end, I said, Joe, what can I do for you? Do you remember what you said? Or do you want me to share it? You probably don't remember because it probably wasn't a big deal to you. But what Joe said. Go ahead. Remind me. <laughs> is at the very end, I said, what can I do for you? He said, you know what, TD? He said, I want you to connect me with. Oh, the twister. The twister. A twister, absolutely. He goes, you know what, TD? Connect me with Twister. Pete Twist. I forget what episode it was, but when Joe got diagnosed, um, I'll put in the show notes what episode it was, but, uh, you know, my man Pete Twist, who who battled cancer and is an amazing soul and spirit, and that man is living life up there in Vancouver, and I love Twister. Joe said, I want to meet Twister. Press the flesh with a guy like that. <sighs> Right. Because absolutely. Press, press, press the, the flesh. flesh with Pete Twist, with the Twister man. Yeah, he's battled. You can see it. When someone's gone through that kind of a battle, you can see you can see their fight in them. Mm. You can see their you can see their appreciation for life every single day. This is not something that we get to put aside and put back into a, a cupboard and, and then continue living our life. This is our life. And he's living it, and he's living the most, the best life he can, and he's inspiring people right now. And and mm. I, I want to meet this guy. I want to meet people like that that inspire me because that again is going to help me get on that that tail end. Yeah, that's what I, I absolutely. What was it about that episode, if you remember, that makes you want to meet him? Is it because of what he's doing now and he's overcome that, or was there something that, like I relate to him? Like you know, he, he's got a, a he's a, you know I would say a spirit animal. That guy's a oh, a, I mean he's a. He's he, wisdom beyond belief when yeah. it comes to perspective. Yeah. I mean, I, I just wanted to share a couple of things on my notes that I wanted to, Please. that I probably learned Please. from him mm. as well. Please is do. that, um, I mean, one, be your own advocate. Some, mm. of the, some of the stories he talked about when he was first diagnosed are hilarious. So if you get a chance to, to, to listen to that it's podcast. It's called Quarterback Your Own Health. I remember yeah, that. It's called Quarterback yeah. Your Own Health because I always talk about, you know, quarterbacking your health. And I say he or she who has their health has a thousand dreams. He or she who does not has one if you don't have your health. And then when Pete came on and shared that about you got to quarterback your health where he literally took his <laughs> sample. his sample from the doctor. <laughs> this, I own this sample. It's mine. It's mine. I'm taking it to another doctor. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, I love this guy. I, mean, I love yeah. the man. But, but, but one of the most difficult things to do mm. is to wait. Yep. The waiting game. They call it scanxiety. And so when, Pete, when, when they said, Pete, you know, we're going to take the sample and we're going to go test it and it's going to take three weeks. And his diagnosis was like weeks that was his diagnosis. Like, yeah. you might not wake it weeks. And he, he, he said to the doctor, whose who sample is that? Is that your sample or is that my sample? And he says, it's your sample. Can I have my sample? Because I'm not waiting three weeks. <laughs> and he went knocking on the door of a couple labs. Yep. And literally something that was going to take two or three weeks took him a day. That's right. And he got on his journey. Like you said, how long does it take to start that fight? It's right now. The fight is right at your doorstep. Don't. There's no waiting. Get up off the canvas. Be your own advocate. Be your own advocate. You know, when you live this close to UCSD, that's a research institution, go there. And, you know, cancer, the cancer field is changing so rapidly right now with things like uh, genetic sequencing and next generation testing that every cancer, every, every, every tumor is different. Mm. And if you're going out there and just hoping that, you know, you're going to put your hands in an oncologist and let them just do chemotherapy and that you're just going to get better. You're, you know, you've got another thing coming because yeah. this is the, this, this, this flow is formidable. So what you're saying is find the best medical team. You have to, that's right. You have to find the best. And you know, everyone out there is fighting this battle, but this is a, this is a formidable foe. And he's, you know, can't, what I've said is cancer is like a shapeshifter. Mm. You think you got it down and he comes back swinging in a different form. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these research hospitals are out there changing lives. Mm. Like I said, they're, they're doing targeted therapies now. They're doing immunotherapy. And the standard of care, unfortunately, in our country, the standard of care is, you know what, we're going to just poison the crap with chemotherapy. And if, uh, if five make it, that's better than... That's better than two. Wow. Uh, and that is not the way that yeah. you can win fights. That's that's not the way to win a game. Yeah. And so you have to it, be your own advocate. It's interesting. You talk about be your own advocate and find the best medical team. And I don't want to go down this rabbit hole, but it's interesting when, <laughs> when you've got an insurance company that you work with, whoever, and you realize you need to go change insurances to get the best 
team That's involved and it take you, you did that? I, absolutely. Okay, I did so that. It, it takes time, energy, sometimes money. But when it's that much of a party, you find a way like I need the best people absolutely. on that. So yeah, my oncologist, the very first oncologist, she's a general oncologist. She's great. One of the best doctors in the sharp system. Mm. When she found out that I was a non-smoking 55 year old, she's like, you need, you probably will need to be at UCSD where they've got a lung cancer specialist team. That's right. And she said, all right. She looked at my insurance. She said, your insurance doesn't get there. Mm. So we need to, so we switched insurance last year, very last minute. And with the, with the hopes that I could go to UCSD and be part of that team. Mm. But she, you know, she was humble enough to realize, hey, you know what? This is, this is, this, this needs, this is going to require a specialist team. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she's pointing me in that direction. But the standard of care in this country was, was that you know what you're fine it's a, it's lung cancer it's vanilla go at it here's here's a set of chemo platinum based chem chemotherapy that should work yeah if it doesn't we'll move on to the next one yeah well Pete uh, Twist, if you're listening, uh, we're going to make this happen. He, he, Joe said, press the flesh. We're going to make sure that we either go up to see Twister in Vancouver or we're going to get Twister down here. And we'll have to have a, uh, a dual episode on the show of you and Twister inspiring the world uh, with your message as well. What was your next one? I, I want to say this real quick. That one thing I wanted to mention to, to, your, to your audience is don't be afraid don't be afraid of the cancer diagnosis, mm. whether it's with you or it's with one of your loved ones or your friends. One thing that Pete had talked about, what a disappointment some of his quote, quote unquote close friends had become, because when you hear about this diagnosis, it's scary. It's scary as a as a friend, as a as a uh, as an acquaintance. I've lost touch with a lot of people because they just don't want to call. And at first, it was, you know, it was it was offensive. It was I got angry with it. Like, why aren't they calling? You know, I'm here battling and I haven't even heard from some of these people. Then you come to realize it's scary. Like how many times have I reached, when someone says they've got cancer, you want to stay away from them. Mm. And the best thing you can do when someone hmm. has cancer is just treat them normal. Give them a call. Talk with them. You don't have to always talk about what's the cancer. Just talk about what's going on in their life. Mm -hmm. You know, show an interest in, in them. And, and that helps them in their mindset. Right. I've got a buddy of mine, Dale, who calls and we just shoot the shit. Yep. On a daily basis sometimes, and he just talks. Yep. Sometimes it's about cancer. Sometimes it's about just life. Sometimes it gives me shit. I give him, him the same. Are crazy videos early in the morning from crazy guys? Absolutely. Is that They're, okay to absolutely. talk smack? <laughs> absolutely. Anything you can do to get a laugh. Right. No, so, I like yeah, that. you got to just reach out to people like that because that's when they need you the most. Yeah. Is to, is to, is when they're in, in, in that fight. And Joe, I would even go further to say, when you say don't live in fear of the diagnosis, guys, that could be about any diagnosis. For sure. It could be anything. It could be, you need a knee replacement. You got a bad back. Hey, I've been through a lot of that myself. And your your fear is always as big as your problem, meaning you think, oh, I got this big knee replacement and you, you fear the worst or a back issue or cancer. Now, obviously, cancer could have terminal, uh, rep, you know, end result, right? Um, at the end. But the bottom line is where are you, where are you living? Are you living in the fear? Are you living in faith? To me, Absolutely. it's like, man, I'm going to have faith that this is going to work out the way it's supposed to work out and God's got a plan and everything else. So um, regardless of one's diagnosis, whether it be your back, whether it be uh, an orthopedic condition, a medical condition that's uh, more of a systemic internal issue, if it's cancer, um, is we got to get our mind right, right? We got to get our mind right. Um, any anything else to share, Joe? Before we uh, we wrap up today's show, um, you know, just uh, like I said, keep your perspective. You know, fall. Uh, just, just be mindful of right now. Be mm. mindful of the present. Be thankful about all the wonderful things that you have in your life. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, keep a, keep a good perspective. Uh, one thing that people talk about uh, is like, do you get angry? Do you get mad? Yeah. You know, I've never gotten angry or mad because there's, again, there's thousands of people that are, that are on this path. Mm -hmm. There's, there are 12 year olds and 10 year olds and 21 year olds that are getting the same diagnosis as me who haven't lived the life that I've lived. Yeah. So be, be thankful that you have what you have, that you've lived your life and, uh, and move forward in the positive light. Yeah. You know, that's all you can do. And again, it might be a year, it might be a month, but you know what, if you stay focused, do your best to get on that tail end, but stay focused on the positive things you're not. That's why I can yep. impart on everyone. When you shared in the beginning, number one, live with hope. What are you hoping for? What What is that you hope for today? I'm, I'm hoping that um, 
that I can stay focused, that I can stay healthy mm. for me personally, yeah. that I can stay healthy, that I can kick the can down the road long enough that cancer research will catch up to my disease and my illness. Mm-hmm. Um, and focus on, you know, the good things that I've got focus on my family. Yeah. Cause I, I might not, I might not win this battle. Mm. I'm hoping that I am, that I will. Um, you know, my friend Marilyn, she just said, you got to focus on right now because it gets away from you. Yeah. I was just thinking about this morning about when, what to talk about every, every day, every day, it's a battle to try and keep those negative thoughts out. And it's not just with me. Think about it. There's a lot of people out there right now that don't have a cancer diagnosis that they can't keep that negative chatter out of, out of the, their mind. Mm-hmm. And it gets in their way of being the most successful, the best self that they can be. Yeah. Me, it's a little bit more pressing. The guy's got a big hammer. This cancer, yeah. this cancer foe's got a big hammer. You got to keep that chatter away. I'm hopeful that I can keep staying positive and that uh, if, if I'm if lucky and helpful enough, I can be on yeah. that tail end. Well, you guys have heard me talk about it before. It's in chapter one of my Get Your Mind Right book because I share exactly that. The average person has about 70 thoughts a day and up to 75% of the thoughts that we have a day negative. are negative. Absolutely. So I'm always like, how do you get your mind right? when your mind ain't right. How do you get your mind right when your mind's not right? And that's what I've been enthralled with is trying to get your mind right when it's not right because most people's minds aren't right Correct. most times of the day. That's what we talk about habits and working out. And Correct. if you get a diagnosis that exacerbates um, the mindset or the negativity or the fear uh, of what's robbing us of our best self, then how do you do that? And um, if you have not, please, if you have not read Get Your Mind Right, do it because it's all about trying to get your mind right on a daily basis like Joe is fighting or wrestling every day um, for his personal health and mind said each and every one of us are too it's what are your battles which yeah. battles are you are you are you wrestling with and uh, last i checked you had a pretty darn good overall wrestling record from your high school and collegiate days <laughs> so i like the odds of of where we're going with this bad boy uh, in some ways i think you know, i've heard before sometimes your mess becomes your message sometimes your mess becomes your message and uh, your message today I know has spoken to thousands of people, uh, at least I'm sure one, because it's impacted me, Joe, your life and your message and what you're doing. Um, I just want to say thank you uh, for being here today and sharing your heart and soul, um, because obviously we've known each other now for, what, 23 years. And um, it, to share your story and to share what you're going through and your wisdom, your experience, everything that you're doing. Um, I just want to say thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I, I appreciate you. I, you know, when I was down after chemotherapy, I came back in here to the, to the gym with my wife who comes on a, on a weekly basis, yep. get on the, getting on the treadmill, being around the, the mindset of the people here has helped me. So, you know, I have a, I have a sign in my house, in our little gym, movement is medicine. Mm. Just yesterday, I had that, that same thing. How do you get that chatter? How do you keep your mind right? Just move a little bit. That's it. Just get up and move, and the rest will take care of itself. Yeah. I, I, you know, did some weight training yesterday. Got off the couch. I was, you know, I'll be honest with you. It, it's it's a battle every day. Yep. Sometimes I get up. I'm more motivated than others, but it's a it's a constant battle that you have the ability to control. Yeah. You have the ability to, to to win the day. Win the day. I think you've said that on. On a, a different couple, podcast, a couple, a couple of times. Just win the day, <laughs> win the moment, yep. and then the win week, the now. The, and then now, win the, the now. week will take care of itself. The month will take care of itself, and pretty soon you string a bunch of those together, and you'll have a pretty good, you know, pretty good life. Yeah. And that's what I'm shooting for now. Well, it sounds like not only have you been listening, but you've been doing. You've been doing that, right? It's so hard when you when you don't feel like doing it, you get up and you do it. Those are the ones Period. that you most need. The workouts you don't feel like doing are the ones you most need. Absolutely. <laughs> so get your tails up and get going. Uh, last question. Uh, this is the Impact Show. Impact to me is legacy. It's what we're all here for. What's Joe Pangelinan's legacy? That I made an impact on the people that I knew, mm. that I was positive, that I was, a, uh, I was a light in their life, that they looked at the positive things in their life, not the negative things in their life, that I made someone laugh, mm. you know? I mean, I, I, this is a funny story. Uh, I, I tried to make my oncologist laugh when she gave me the diagnosis of cancer. And this is a true story. She said, you've got this, this type of cancer, uh, whatever. And she says, it's, uh, it's, it's very common in middle. It's very strange. Do you have it? It's very common in middle aged, middle aged Asian women. And I told her, you know, me being the, trying to be the light in everyone's eye. I said, well, I'm a middle aged <laughs> And I'm Asian, 
and I'm really in touch with my feminine side. So <laughs> what do you think? Is that, is that a good thing? <laughs> is that she a good thing? Like that. Give me the medication. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. She didn't, she didn't laugh. I don't think she was used to having jokes in her, in right. her, in her diagnosis room, but right. you know, I want to be, I want to be mm. the light for someone, mm. and, you know, like for my family, I might can laugh all the time try to at least be light in the, in the friendships that I've got. And, uh, when people look back and think, Hey, yeah. that, that guy was, he was, he was a positive impact on my life. He made me laugh. He worked hard. He yep. did the right things. And you're doing that. Joe, if someone would like to continue to follow your story, um, follow Joe Pangelina and your journey, where can they do that? Is there a Facebook page or a caring page? Where can one uh, best keep up with the, the journey of yeah, Joe Pangelina? I and, I, I, I've got a caring bridge web site that my uh, family has put together for me. Okay. So I keep people up to date on what's going on with the treatments, with my health. I try and post when important things happen or uh, just when other, you know, other life changing things happen within my life. And it's, it's big man, Joe, big Can't, man, Joe, big man, Joe. It's a nickname my son and his friends gave me. So uh, they go to caring, caring, caring bridge, caring bridge.com caring, caring yep, yep, yep. and type in big man, Joe, and you'll see a picture of my mug up there. I love it. Yeah, folks. I'll also put that in the show notes so that you have that. I would highly recommend if you want some inspiration and motivation and follow along how Joe has um, continued his physicality and continues to work out on a regular basis and nutritionally he's dialed everything in. Uh, thanks to Cindy who keeps you dialed in and, and twist and, and, twister, and twister, the twister, the, the twenty six ingredient jungle juice. Had one this morning. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. So uh, and go back and listen to to that episode again. I'll put that in the show notes as well so you can link to it. Um, and you don't need to have cancer diagnosis or to have had cancer to listen to this. I uh, please encourage you to share this with someone uh, that just needs more hope or more inspiration. Or Joe talked about being more present uh, in these areas. I encourage you to, to follow Joe's story. Joe, brother, I love you, man. I thank you so much for being here. This made my day uh, when you, you agreed to come onto the show and share all that you're doing. Thank you, TD. Appreciate being here, being a part of your life, and uh, looking forward to many more years. Wow. Oh, wow. My friends, I hope you enjoy that episode today as much as me. You know, I've done, what, 200 and something episodes now, and I got to tell you, that was one of my most favorite ones to interview because I've known Joe for 23 years, guys, 23 years. And I remember the day when my wife, Melanie, told me that Joe was diagnosed with lung cancer. I said, impossible. Joe is one of the healthiest guys I know. He works out all the time. He's a former athlete. He, he doesn't drink. He doesn't smoke. Uh, he, he's, a, he's the cleanest cut guy I know. It's impossible that he has lung cancer. And... Um, you know, the reality is that Joe has taken his wrestler's mentality and embraced this thing and is fighting like mad um, in so many ways. And when you think about some of the lessons, I hope that as you're reflecting right now, as you're out for your workout, I want to say congratulations. Thank you for taking care of your health. That is the most important thing that we can do, as Joe shared with that, is that we live with more hope is that you stay present today, today that you win every conversation that you're in. Sometimes life gets in the way, Joe said, life gets in the way. Let's not have life sidetrack us and knock us off course today, but let's stay present with where we're at and realize that when life gets in the way, we're going to just course correct and get back on the path that we're destined to be. Be your own advocate. We talked about with Twister and quarterback in your own health is be your own advocate in your own health and wellness on that I love find the best medical team. I don't know about you, but in the last year myself in, in navigating between my knee and my back and everything that's you know going on, you got to find the medical team that can serve you best, whether that be with alternative health, nutritionist, naturopathic, allopathic medicine, you find people who can help you be the best that you can possibly be physically, mentally, spiritually, all aspects, because our faith has to be dialed up too when we're in the battle. And then he talked about don't living in the don't live in the fear of the diagnosis. Are you living in fear today of something? Is it eating you up and causing more stress and anxiety and depression than it needs to? Let's make sure that we use faith over fear, faith over fear on that. And you've got a bucket list of more experiences of your family. Let's make sure we do that. And then lastly, folks, you know, Joe talked about press the flesh. Press the flesh. Who, whose flesh are you going to press today? Meaning, who are you going to hug? 
Who are you going to give a high five to? Whose hand are you going to shake? And when you shake their hand, you're going to look them in the eye, that, that boy or girl, that son or daughter, your, your spouse who you need to serve even greater. It's your, it's your responsibility to serve your spouse even greater for your leaders and, and for your employers and employees. Anyone you come across, press the flesh, press the flesh. Man, we all know the power of touch in the last almost two years now, a uh, year and a half plus of not being able to, to touch like the way that we need to be touched as human beings. Joe honed in on that several times with his doctors and the doctor who actually extended her arm to press the flesh. Joe said he wanted to press the flesh of Twister. Pete Twist, we're going to make this thing happen. But today... I implore you today to press the flesh of someone that you love. Give a smile. Press the flesh of a smile when, you're, when you're, your face is joyous and your heart is open. My friends, press the flesh. Press the flesh. Get out there today and make the world a better place. And Joe Pangelinen, I thank you today for sharing those words of wisdom because I am fired up today to go out and press the flesh of more human beings. And I don't know if that's going to be at Fitness Quest 10 on this podcast. I inspired someone, but I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you. I want you to share this today. Share this episode today. If you want to be a lighthouse, if you want to be the lighthouse that Joe talked about of being the light, and whether it be in the US, Canada, anywhere in this world that you're listening to this episode, you go press the flesh by sharing this episode with someone so that you can be the lighthouse that this world so desperately needs. That's called press the flesh. <laughs> Folks, I'm fired up. And I just want to say this. Thank you. My heart is so grateful today for that conversation with Joe Pangelinen that I'm going to end with this. Train hard, eat right, live inspired. And today, go press the flesh so you can create that impact that you're so destined to create. I love you guys. Until next time, God bless you all. Peace. I'm out.